going on, man? Best of the best entertainment. Mill ticket 3278. Ain't know what the fuck going on. So you got that mixtape finna drop, man. Yes. So so um why did you name it what they gonna say now? Um a lot of reasons really. But foremost, every time somebody saw me, I was always everything was with somebody else. When they when I first started rapping, I was with the weirdo and Fooly Boy. That's when I we came out with, I ain't gonna lie. It got a little buzz. So then after that, some shit happened with Weirdo. He got, you know, he locked up Frida Weirdo right now. Um, then I moved to Sheboygan and I met some nigga named Mello. And he was heavy hustle and I was 3278. So then I joined with him. So now we, then we was 3278 heavy hustle. So then uh, I got the hearing. Like people sneak this and talk about some, oh, he always needs somebody else. He can't do it by himself. You know, like he, like he, like I just can't, like, like I really need somebody. So I named it what they gonna say now, cause I'm doing this shit all on my own. Like everything that's on here, not every song, but like every, I put the money together for this on my own. Um, most of the songs are on my own. I got a couple features on there, but. That's why I named it what they gonna say now, cause now I wanna now I wanna hear from them when this mixtape drop, what they really gonna say. Like what excuse they gonna have for me then. You know they gonna find something to say. They, they'll find something. Um so this album, how many songs gonna be on this uh, on this uh mixtape? I'm thinking like 13, 14 blazing tracks, you know, like industry, should have been in the industry, but you know, it's way my time, but like 13, 14 hot songs. So out of all those songs, what's your favorite song on the tape? I ain't gonna lie, it's, it's called No Time. And I, that bitch just, every time I listen to it, I just get me in mode. Man, I love that song. No Time on the mixtape, y'all, it's called No Time. So, um... You and Melo fell out, so you found some new features. What if you did? What features gonna be on this tape? Oh, uh, I got um, my brother LBM Shan G on there, uh, and I think the other one is my guy Marlo from uh, Chicago. I think, uh, to be honest, I think them the only two features on there. So let's let's get to it, man. So what happened with you and Melo? So I'm gonna start from the beginning. Um, you know, it was like, I, I picked him up as like a, a little brother of mine. You know, I lost my brother, uh, R.P. Baby G. So, and I started being around him so much, like I got the, I grew on him like, all right, this my little brother, I'm fucking with him, we gone. We rapping, we gone. Whatever, whatever he go through, I'm going through it. No matter what, no matter what it is, niggas can talking beef, I'm there. If, if it's good, I'm there, you know what I mean? Anything, so, and I, I'm, Pretty sure, like, the brother code is like, you can, you all can, you can fuck with any girl unless it's the baby mama or your main bitch at that time. Now, if I'm wrong, I need somebody to please comment below and let me know if I'm wrong. If we're brothers and the only female that we can't talk to is the baby mothers or the main bitch at that time. So, all right, so I. Um, I was start talking to some girl um, of his first, but like she, he was just like really just like using her for like rides and sex and shit. So shit, I swooped in. But the only thing about it is, I always tell him like, "Hey, she on me." I even blocked the girl a couple times. She writing me off other people's pages like, "Let me talk on me." So I talked to her. He said he don't care about it. Okay, that one was gone. Boom. So then I was talking to this chick for like two years on and off, like. He knew I was talking to her for two years on and off. He used to pick me up from her crib, all type of shit. So then I had to find out from his baby mama one day, like, she, so she inboxed me like, so you and Melo fucking the same girl? I'm like, what the fuck you talking about? Like, there's no way, like, no way that could happen. So he like, so she said her name. So I'm like, never. He wouldn't do that. Like, I knew he wouldn't do that to me because he knew how, how I was fucking with her. So then, she like, shit, they at the Bucks game right now. I'm never, because Charlie, my nigga Charlie at the Bucks game. So then I called Charlie. I'm like, shit, what up? Who, what you doing? He like, I'm at the Bucks game, me and my girl. And then he like, I'm going to call you back. I'm like, what? So, so before that, though, the week before that, 
Like Tom is not answering the phone for me. You know, he ain't texting me back. You know, when you when you be with somebody for so long every day, like you used to them, like you used to they what they do on a daily basis. So he ain't so I'm already seeing like some some is fishy, but I'm thinking in like, oh, I'm just giving him his time. Maybe he just going through he just going through some shit. So I'm giving him his time, ain't tripping. So then I call him. I'm like, what you doing? He's like, shit, I'm at the Bucks game. And then like something happened, the phone hung up or something happened. So then I wrote him on Snap, like, like you ain't gotta act funny towards me over this female. I ain't mad at you for talking to her. I'm mad at you for the way that your actions, the way you acting towards me now that you talking to her. Like, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna never be, I ain't gonna never say I wasn't salty because I, I was really salty that he was talking to her, but it's nothing I could do because that's not my main bitch or my baby mama. And she's entitled to talk to whoever she want to talk to when she want to talk to him. So that's what I told him. Like, I'm not mad at you for talking to her. I'm mad at you for the way that you're acting while you're talking to her. So we blew that situation. We blew that. He said, he said, we ain't gonna bring it up no more. We ain't gonna talk about it. Fuck it. I left it alone. I'm cool now. I'm cool with both of them now. We, we all cool. Even though they, I know after that, they talk to each other after that again, but that's none of my business. Like I said, I don't care. So then before I went to jail in 2014, I was talking to one of his chicks, but I didn't know that they were his chicks at the time. I was just talking to her. So then when I got out of jail, all that, I didn't talk to her, none of that. None of that time I was out of jail from 2014 to 2018. So then I, I just hit her up, like, what up? Like, let's, let's play these video games. Let's play games on the phone. We was playing a little pool game. So then it went from there to her trying to, like, us talking to each other. So then, mind you, I tell him, I tell him the same day, like, hey, she trying to talk to me and my guy. And he like, all right, fuck her. Fuck that bitch. I don't give no fuck about it. All right, I'm cool. All right, so you don't care. So then I go over there. I didn't hit her, didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing with her for like two weeks. Be only on the strength that I thought she was trying to talk to me to get back at him. So then he wrote me another day like, this, I was at work, so I couldn't, I wanted to call him, but I couldn't. So he like, all right, I ain't mad at you for talking to her. Uh, I'm just mad that because you knew how I felt about her and all, like that shit embarrassing. And I'm like, bro, if you want me to stop talking to her, I'll cut her off right now. She don't even have to know that we had this conversation. I'll cut her off. And he like, no, nah, y'all can go be happy. So then I was supposed to go to a boxing match with him the next day. With, um, it was Levine boxing match. But I told him I was sick. And if, if I don't hear my phone ring, I ain't gonna, you know what I mean? I can't hear it. So I missed the fight. Next thing I know, I go on Facebook and try to inbox him. I find that I'm blocked. <laughs> like the nigga blocked me from all media sites, everything. Facebook, Snapchat, text, all that. He blocked me. So I'm like, damn, what the fuck? Why he acting like that? So then now the only way I can get to him is I call my nigga Charlie. Like, Charlie, when you see him, tell him I'm going to smack the shit out of him because he acting like a bitch over this bitch. So then... Charlie tell him. So then now nah, I'm unblocked now. Now nah, he texts me like, why you telling motherfuckers you gonna smack me such and such? I'm like, bro, listen, you mad about this bitch. Like, me, I'm seeing it as a bigger picture. We both to, if we both to be boys and like boys slash brothers. Like we cool, we've been cool with each other for so long, and you mad about a bitch that's not even your main bitch. Like I can see if that was your baby mama or something, you entitled to be mad. But that's just a side bitch, my nigga. Like, you're not really entitled. Like, she can talk to whoever she want to when she want to. Like, you can't be mad at me because I got the shot. She gave me the shot. So then, after that, we, we so, we fell off. Um, I knew we fell off because I could tell by the way things was moving. Like, it was just, everything was just different, you know? So then, then after that, I got the, people got the, he got, the, he made these songs. I ain't gonna lie, I like the songs. I forgot their names, though. But people telling me like, oh, uh, he telling us that these songs about you. So I went to the studio to, to talk to him about it. I ain't gonna lie, we didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about it. I, to be honest, when I got there, I didn't even bring it up. Cause I got there, I'm just like, damn, this shit gonna go all the way bad right here. If I, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I ain't gonna bring it up, fuck it. I'm gonna just let that shit slide. So then they asked me like, shit, you wanna do a show? I'm like, yeah, why not? So then they had me a special guest for the show. Came out there, rocked that bitch like, like ain't gonna lie, the whole show was packed. They was live for everybody. But when I came out there, it was just a different type of energy, you know what I mean? Because they didn't know I was there. They, Because now at this point, they used to seeing him by himself now. 
Now, when I come out there, we just go nuts. They everybody going crazy. But then after that, like it really died down though. Like I knew, I knew it was over. I just could feel it, feel the vibe when I would him. Like I can feel when I would him that like he don't like me no more. You know what I mean? So I'm like, fuck, fuck it. I like what else can I do? I can't make a nigga wanna wanna kick it with me. So I'm like, fuck it. So then uh, I'm sharing. I get I share a status one day. A memory status popped up with me and him. And I be like, I post, post like yeah, that's still my that's still my brother no matter what. And my nigga come in the room like, why you acting so motherfucking soft, nigga? What the fuck wrong with you? He ain't liking your statuses. He don't post you. Why the fuck is you still? Why the fuck is you still doing that to him? Like he real life harm me, but like not harm me, but like he lecturing me, like he telling me what's really happening. Cause right now at this, like, sometimes I still be lost. Cause I like I said, I was with him every day for like two years straight. So. I still be wanting to like call him sometimes, kick it with him. But then my nigga, like, when, once I sat back and looked at it, like, my nigga, he wasn't lying. And my nigga, his name is Flawless. He wasn't lying. Cause when I looked, Thomas Muff definitely don't like none of my statuses, which is that's, that's not, no, not no big deal though. But he don't post no memory pictures of us, no none of it. He was just saying, like, why you out here posting him? Like, why you out here trying to get his attention? He not trying to get your attention. Like, you want to be cool with him, but he don't want to be cool with you type shit. So I, then I had to get that through my head. Like, he really, like, if he really don't want to be cool with me, I ain't finna force. Like, I, lo I lost a real brother. Like, I don't mind losing a friend now. You know what I mean? So that's what happened with me and him. So, like, we still ain't talking about the situation. But shit, y'all know now what really happened with 3278 Heavy Hustle. It, yes, it was over a female. So what's new? What's next? I ain't gonna lie. I'm just... I'm just, everything, I'm going bigger and better now, everything. I'm making, I'm from the show, everybody that I don't need nobody, I don't need no group, I can do it by my own. As a single artist, how do you feel the tape is going to go? To be honest, I think it's gonna go good in Sheboygan. Cause that's where everybody, that's where they, they like me the most. So I feel like it's gonna go good there. It's gonna be all right in Milwaukee only cause I got family and a couple friends, but it's not gonna be you know, electric fine like air, like I like I really want it to be, but it's gonna it's gonna be alright. So, do you think, as an artist, this is gonna be your breakout mixtape? To be honest, I think this mixtape gonna put a little light on me. But by but my next one, oh, man, I can't even tell y'all. The next one gonna be that gonna be that shit. So, how do you feel about being an underdog, knowing everybody sound the same, or going for popularity? Um, actually. I feel good about being an underdog because a lot of people don't think that I got what's coming out. They didn't think I had that in me. And I really don't sound like everybody else. But I, it is, it do kind of frustrate me that they going off popularity because there's a lot of people who don't deserve the attention that they get it. And the people like me that who really work hard on this craft, I do whatever I got to do just to make these music and they don't give me my recognition that I need. But I'm gonna wake their ass up. We're gonna see what they gotta say now. Will we see any videos on this mixtape? Oh, yeah. I already got like three of them in mind. All right, we fin I'm finna go crazy. I'm telling you, it's finna be a movie. A whole 2019, a movie. So let's talk about the haters. Let's talk about the haters. I ain't gonna lie. I love my haters, they give me so much energy. And they make me, they the ones that make me come up with this music that I'm coming up with now on this mixtape. Every, every song on here, you could tell that I'm coming at every hater, everybody, whoever doubted me, anybody who ever said anything bad about me, I'm coming at them and they know who they is. So they know what's going on when they see me. And 2019, I ain't taking no more disrespect. I'm smacking the fuck out you niggas. Anybody who got anything disrespectful to say, I'm smacking you niggas. So y'all better get ready. So we, um, we tuning out, man. Get your shout outs. All uh, right. I want to shout out to Best of the Best Entertainment. I want to shout out my mom. I want to shout out my kids. I want to shout out Flawless, Liddell, my brothers. I want to shout out Sheboygan, Milwaukee, the whole United States, everything. I want to just shout out to everybody, even the people who hated me, even the people who doubted me. I'm going to shout y'all out too. I love y'all too. I probably love y'all more than I love everybody I just named. Talk your shit, bro. That's it, hey. They know what the fuck going on, man. Meal ticket 3278. They know what's finna happen. Free my boy the weirdo. Hey, I hope the judge don't slam fully. 
Yeah, fuck the mother niggas. Oh, they can find me. You got y'all can find me on Snapchat, George Boygan13. Y'all can find me on Instagram, Mill Ticket3278, or y'all can find me on Facebook, George Hawkins. And that website is coming soon, man. And y'all be looking out for that mixtape. B Double M Group presents what they gonna say now. Coming soon. We out. Shut up and hustle. It's Mill Ticket3278. Please don't have the double H's. Shh.